clay is like the mind. It can be molded, melded, put into any shape or form. It's strange to say I remember being a boy watching children's shows. Because it was like yesterday. Maybe it very well was yesterday. Are we small examples of a larger idea? Never mind. Listen, I know what you're faking already. I still remember sitting on my grandmother's couch and watching Gumby. It was a show, as there were many shows, and this is just a piece of something larger. After my father died, I'd been going for some old boxes of pornographic magazines to read a mature woman with sagging tits when I found a strange VHS I'd never seen. Where had I seen it? It was just a still shot of a green Gumby head, with no back panel on the other side of the VHS of the yellow background. The VHS itself had the word six months later typed in a heavy font. I immediately dusted off the VHS player put the VHS on. Strange guitar sound and music played before the intro went ahead and on. This was a strange episode. It was titled The Small Planet. If you never watched Gumby, he's a green piece of clay. His friend is an orange clay horse. After the intro song played, ending with, If you have a heart, then Gumby's a part of you. A shot of Gumby immediately traveling into space was shown. The stop-motion claymation was once a classic artifact of my childhood, but here, everything was sicker. We can't survive in space, Gumby. Or, we can't survive in space, Gumby. Pokey's voice was much higher pitched, though many times because my voice was higher pitched and childlike when I last watched this program. They were on a spaceship, immediately leaving home. We're going to find a new planet where no one can tell us what to do, Gumby said. Indeed, they weren't running from home on some Martian saucer. Gumby's eyes looked a little more round than usual. His body a mere fragmented piece of clay that was turning more rigidly. But space is endless, Gumby, Pokey the horse said. Sorry if I'm doing a high pitch, that's just what the voice, that's what the, the story says, but anyway. If we were to travel a single line there to the sun to come home, all of our friends and family would be dead by the time we return. We'll have to go back, Gumby. No, Gumby said, staring the ship violently. They were supposed to land on Mars, it seemed, but the ship broke through it, sending a boy on a train flying out into the cosmos. We're not going home, Gumby said. But we can't survive without oxygen. We're clay, Gumby said. Clay doesn't breathe. The ship continued off into the far reaches of space. The scene went off for about for five minutes with no music or talking. Gumby diligently steered the ship as it went faster and faster, hurling through space before the engine gave out and the, it drifted like a tin can across the star of the sky that seemed to go on forever. Some time had passed. After some time had passed, Gumby began to miss his mother and father. He remembered the vague figment to pokey and he on a swing set, around a barn, in the sunny earth home. I want to go home, Gumby, Pokey said. We can't, Gumby said. We're clay scientists in the mind, and we must press forward, because remember, there is no past or present, only cells decay and we have no cells or flesh. Pokey the horse stopped, taking off his space helmet after 15 minutes. You're out, Zingumbi, he said. <laughs> Why am I laughing? The camera zoomed softly into his face where stubble was beginning to collect. What is that? Gumby said. His, his body started to undulate. He reached down to his stomach. I'm, I'm naked, Gumby said. I was always naked and I feel cold. You're alive, Pokey said. My god, you're alive! You have valves, capillaries, and pulling vessels, and your eyes are. Gumby started to cry. I'm blind, he said. I was always blind, but now I know that I'm blind. Someone help me, he cried. He fell into the background, picking up an old, old rotary dial telephone calling 911 as the camera zoomed. 
it's not plugged in, Gumby. There's a cord that's over on Squash Power Lines. No cord, no reception. I now notice a lot of things that would normally be in the living room, such as lamps and furniture, were in the central cockpit of the ship, which seemed much narrower and cluttered now. Gumpy stumbles around blind before Pokey tries to hold him up. Let's go home, Pokey, Gumby said. I ain't enough. Let's go home. At about 30 seconds of dead air, you see Gumby... Where am I? Right. Attached to an iron lung. This was a long cylinder where only Gumby's head was capable of poking out. I couldn't salvage your head, but see, there's two of us. Isn't that nice? Gumby said rather loudly. I feel less alone, yes, but I know what happened to you. The screen sort of faded to show what Pokey was, a mop and bucket with some orange sheets on top. Gumby sighed. There was a single point of sound that chimed like someone had turned the radio on. How could someone, surrounded by billions of people and animals, feel so alone? Sorry if I'm not doing the high-pitched voices anymore, it's starting to make me laugh. A shot of the ship exterior was shown now, it was banged out terribly. Initially, it looked like the designers had suspended it with a string, but now it seemed to be fully in actual space. It looked more aluminum than clay, and Gumby's lonesome head peered through the hot porthole window from a distance. I felt as though I was drugged, or I had just woken from some bad dream to enter a worse reality. Gumby pried the iron lung from the inside. He had physical organs that looked like fish guts, and some weird pink punch drinks sort of together rotted up soggy newspaper. He clothed himself in the orange rag and peered out the window. A weird narration started as an odd black orb was shown. They call this star the Dead Star, outside of Earth. It's the only star in the known universe. Initially left home under a noble premise to secure food resources in the clay population. But now it's clear that whoever designed this place had no intention of giving us enough oxygen the last return trip. But there will be no return trip as those we know and love are already dead. I understand now what the figure is. It's not exclusive to this, or us. Though, for thick and thin, our species has struggled on valiantly, valiant poverty, war, hardship, disease. But now it's clear as day that was always vanity. I'm as much here as I was 20 years ago, that I see. No, he said. I can't see it all. His eyes were clearly white and glossy like a cauterized wound. My name is Gumby. I'm 14 years old. I like ice cream, baseball, and fountain soda. When I grew up, I wanted to be an astronaut. He was holding the rotary dial phone. The simulacra stopped moving, but the V just continued to play. The stars began to arrange in points of light, like a mass of threads. A bright light appeared, hitting the sun in full force. It cast over the side of Mars. The rest of the planet, a massive planet-sized crab rests on the dark side, not moving, but watching, clipping its claws. Its eyes began to glow as the crumpled tin can drifted across the sky.